Welcome to Mother Russia, my comrades. Today we're going to take a dip into this amazing Mother Russian country. But before we can touch on the absolutism of Russia, we must first address the time of troubles. A time very dire in my history. The time of troubles from 1584 to 1613 was a time full of famine. It was a time of invasion as well, and Boris Godunov, the Tsar at the time, had his throne challenged by an imposter, false Dmitri. No, I'm trying, it's a great time of famine, but I'm trying to help our people, but it's not enough. Like, people are dying and starving. But look, there's even Poles and Cossacks and Russians trying to conquer our lands and take them from us. So many people are upset with everything, I don't know what to do. There's so many people that are angry with my air and I'm trying my best to do everything I can, but there's just so many people that are trying to take over the throne. We even have an imposter named Paul Dmitri trying to take over Russia, calling himself the king. I will handle him. He's clearly not the true heir to this throne. I will make sure that and he in the end, any the effort Boris Godunov had made to reform his country was a failure, and he also succumbed to death from the poor famine is still coming. We're still being attacked. I know. I'm doing everything I can, but my health. Your health, your scrawny. You're going to die. Oh. He's dead. Our king is dead. You were the first. Now that. Boris is dead. It's up to me to set Russia right and stop these invading forces. What was that? No! Dmitry, I shall have come to take your spot on the throne and I will kill you for it. Now it is my turn to rule over Russia and claim this land as true Tsar of Russia. Imposter, I shall take over this throne. I am Vasily Shuisky, and the other boyars and I, we will no longer have this from you. You will this no longer be the ruler. Me. No, I am who shall be the true son. This is mine now. I will lead Russia up to glory. After the deposition of Vasily Shuisky, the government fell to the hands of seven senior boyars. This was a time of extreme trouble. The Poles invaded, and in 1610, the Swedes invaded northwestern Russia. Poland! Ah! Or Sweden! I will take over Russia too! The Russian states were on the verge of disintegration. It was only after the national armies were able to successfully drive out the opposing forces in a matter of years that a new dynasty was able to emerge the Romanovs. Michael ruled as Tsar of Russia from 1613 to 1645 as the founder of the Romanov dynasty. He was elected by the Zimsky Sobor, meaning Assembly of the Land, after the Time of Troubles, a period of chaos, disorder, foreign invasions, and a rapid succession of rulers. Michael worked to restore order to Russia, bring peace between them, Poland and Sweden, and bring the people out of poverty. Michael's father, called Philaret, became a monk and later patriarch of the church. His father's involvement in the government helped Michael increase diplomatic, commercial, and cultural contact with Western Europe. Michael's successor was Alexei Mikhailovich. Alexei ruled as Tsar of Russia from 1645 to 1676. His reign was tarnished by many revolts, a very serious one by the Cossacks. Because of the results in Skov, Novgorod, and Moscow, Alexei introduced a new legal code in 1649, which ended up tying the peasants even closer to their landlords. A conflict with the patriarch, Nikon, led to his exile to a northern monastery and the great schism within the Russian church. Alexei's successor was Fyodor III. Fyodor III ruled as Tsar of Russia from 1676 to 1682. He abolished the system of precedence among the Boyar families where appointments in civil and military service were based on social rank rather than on merit. 
he banned the practice of burying wives alive for the murder of their husbands, the mutilation of thieves, and the boyars were no longer being kept by the local population. He had a very accomplished but short reign, leaving no unresolved issues behind. The next Tsar is Peter the Great, and under him, Russia prospered and succeeded. Russia did not reach its glory until the reign of Peter I, also called Peter the Great. He ruled from 1682 to 1725. It was under this Tsar that absolutism in Russia was defined. He was the model ruler. When Peter first came to power, he shared the throne with Ivan V and a regency of Sofia. As Peter grew older and Sofia's power weakened, conflicts started between the two until Sofia finally retired. After the downfall of Sofia, Peter left the government in the hands of his mother so he could pursue his dreams of shipbuilding. After his mother died, however, he took a more active role in the government. His principal goals were the enhancement of Russia's international standing, the establishment of a Russian presence on the Black Sea, and gaining access to the Baltic at the expense of Sweden. In 1695, Peter went to war against Turkey, but was unsuccessful. After this defeat, he realized that he could have won if he had a fleet of ships. He created shipyards and even labored besides the workers as a result. After this, he attacked again and he was able to successfully capture the city of Azov. After his military success, Peter took a leave and traveled across Europe on a tour called the Great Embassy. He traveled across Western Europe in disguise to countries such as England and the Netherlands. He witnessed their shipbuilding techniques, advanced weaponry, saw their organized military, and even their unique customs. Oh, England and the Netherlands is so much more advanced than Mother Russia. Look at their military, it's so much more organized, their leadership, outstanding, even their society and culture, their technological improvements, they have better transportation, oh, their culture, it's outstanding. I think I should start a westernization movement in Russia, we should be more like Western Europe. A revolt by the Strelzy brought him back to Moscow. When he returned to Russia, the revolt had already been suppressed, but he created a committee to investigate the revolt. He dealt with these people through private torture and public executions. He killed over 1,000 Strelzy and used their deaths as an example of backwardness in Russia. In regards to the boyars, or nobility, after Peter learned the customs of Western Europe, he personally shaved their long beards, a long-time symbol of their status, and started to modernize Russia. Now it is time to become more like the Western countries. They're far more superior. We need to abide to their customs. We'll start by cutting off your disgraceful beards. Yes, my son. Not on my beard. It must go. Ah, uh, no. This was all in 1698. Furthermore, he also decreed that Western clothes be worn. It was through his harsh reaction to the Strelzy revolt and disgracing of the boyars that he got his subjects to obey him and express his power in Russia. Peter would have a modern country, no matter what the cost. What was called the Great Northern War started in the year 1700. Peter invaded Sweden but was unable to defeat Charles XII. Peter realized that victory would only come with the time and further modernization. As a result, in 1701, Peter established an artillery school. He had Russia modernized their guns and produced more cannons than Sweden. Peter was able to increase the power of his military exponentially, thus strengthening the absolute power of Russia. The Great Northern War concluded in 1721 with a peace agreement was reached between Sweden and Russia. Russia was allowed to keep most of her territorial gains. Now Russia had a coastline that stretched from Riga to Voiborg. Peter the Great had desired a seaport to allow Russia to be able to be more connected to the Western European nations. St. Petersburg, which became Russia's new capital, was obtained through the Great Northern War and is located on the Gulf of Finland. Peter instructed the city to be built with Western European architecture, including a mini version of the Palace of Versailles. Peter greatly admired Sweden's college system and decided to create eight of them in Russia to oversee matters such as the collection of taxes, foreign affairs, war, and economic affairs. Peter divided the members between nobles of those who were loyal to him. 
Peter also created a table of ranks, which was intended to draw nobility into a state service. This table equated people by a person's social position with their ranks in the government or military, rather than a person's lineage. This made many boyars serve the government to sustain their societal status. The last patriarch died. Instead of electing a new one, Peter the Great simply abolished the position and created what is called the Holy Synod, which would govern the church according to the Tsar's secular requirements. In all, Peter the Great was a true absolute ruler. Any challenges to his power were destroyed, and he inspired his people through modernization and a powerful mind. I am Peter the Great. And I am a boyar. Thank you for watching our presentation. I, however, am not the boyar. I am Brandon Jocker. And I am not Peter the Great, nor Ken. I am Timothy Kinlong.